baby, I'm gonna get me some cherry wood. <laughs> Hello everyone and welcome to another tutorial video. I played in PDA, I'm your host. And my co-host today is Jeff, who appears to be a little camera shy. Say hi to the folks, Jeff. Come on. No? Okay. Well, we can't wait for Jeff to get over his camera shyness. We need to get going. So, without further ado, let's start. In this tutorial, I'm only going to tell you the most important things you'll want to know when you're doing your tree breeding. So, a lot of this information is either very hard to find or doesn't exist, except in this tutorial now. So, hopefully they will find something useful, and let's begin with the tools. So, you've got the grafters. There's three different types. There's the regular one, which is made with bronze. There's the recipe, and then there's the thormium, which has a thorncraft recipe. And then there's the proven grafter, which you have to buy from this arborist villager here. So, it costs two emeralds, which is nice and cheap, and I recommend doing that because the other grafters have quite low durability, and the thorium grafter actually uses two durability every time you use it. You can enchant all of them with unbreaking, and of course the thormium grafter can also have repair two on it. So, with this one, you effectively have 600 uses, which is very good. Now, let's have a look at the tree elizer. The tree elizer tells you a number of different st statistics about a tree, and we can find it out by running with this common walnut sapling. So you can see unknown genome, and then if we do run it through, then you can, then it shows us all the statistics in the tooltip. We have a number of different statistics here. We've got the saplings, which controls how many saplings the tree will drop. Between 1 and 10% of leaf blocks will drop a sapling, but that's if you break them yourself. If you leave them to naturally despawn, then you will get between 3 and 30%, or you will get three times the number of saplings. Matures. This is the st stat which controls how much bone meal is required to make the tree grow, and it also thereby controls how much time it takes for the tree to grow if you don't bone meal it. Height. There's an internal height variable for every species multiplied by this height variable. So we could have a gigantic height here, uh, but it still wouldn't be the size of a sequoia tree, for instance. It would be very tall, but it wouldn't be sequoia tall. Then there's girth. This is very obvious. Bigger is better. That's what she said. Um, one by one, two by two, three by three, and possibly in the future, four by four. There is a four by four tree in the game, but it's not. Uh, you can't get it in survival yet. Yield. This is the stat which controls how much fruit is produced by each leaf block when it breaks. So there seems to be a bit of confusion about this, like the wiki didn't agree with my experiments, but um, I'll talk about that later as well. So the higher the yield is obviously better most of the time. Sappiness, this controls two things. Number one, how much uh, biomass can be created by the sapling if you run it through that process or uh, it also controls how quickly the fruit ripens on the tree. So those are two things that the sappiness controls. And then there's the effect, which currently no trees have any effects, but presumably at some point they're going to give us status effects, just like the bees. So the growth stuff is all pretty straightforward. Supports, nuts, prunes, palms. OK, so this tree, uh, were it to be a hybrid, and were it to receive a different fruit as a result, it would it would be able to grow fruits from these three families. It wouldn't be able to grow jungle fruits, and it wouldn't be able to grow berries and things like that. But it will grow prunes, so you could have a plum here um, if you hybridized it with a plum, 
or you could have different types of nuts obviously because the walnut is a nut and poms well that's things like lemons and oranges and apples as well as it turns out and the rest of this stuff is pretty simple you know it can produce walnuts and there's mutations that it can do and this is just a little easter egg so that is your materializer all right the next thing you'll want is this arborist chest which you can stick all your saplings in and it will take it will keep track of the number of species that you've produced as well then you have the arborist database which is pretty self-explanatory I'll let you guys have a look at that explore that at your own leisure it's been explained by the people the spectacles allow you to see mutated leaves the carpentry hammers are for things that are going to be explained later in the tutorial then you have the flutterizer which is like the trialyzer except it's for butterflies the lepidopterist database which is the same sort of thing as the arborist database except for butterflies and the master one of both so then we have these fluids added and these two materials there's the sap resin turpentine and these are progression so sap gets turned into resin which turns, gets turned into turpentine and latex which doesn't seem to be properly programmed yet bark and sawdust which have limited use but uh, they are produced by processes in this mod so that is most of the tools and things so let's move on to the next section the next thing we need to do is figure out what these machines are for so there's a lumber mill and it takes power and then there's a woodworker which doesn't take power and there's a panel worker which also doesn't take power so if I get some of these logs ooh, I don't want infinite just just a stack um, you can place your logs in the lumber mill and it will use water and power to convert them into six planks per log and you also get this bark and the sawdust uh, which currently I don't know if they have much of a use to be honest you can make paper out of it okay so that's not bad and that's all and the bark can be used to make mulch okay there you go alright so once you have your planks um, let's get another type so I'll have a holly that's nice so you grab your planks and you can put them in this machine right here which creates this interesting designs so you can choose the pattern and then once you're ready once you've picked the one you want let's say we want this one you can just take them out and this is your inventory so you just stack them in there lovely uses this wood polish stuff which is made using the turpentine so you use turpentine in a carpenter with beeswax and that makes four so I guess now we need to talk about how to make the turpentine so what you need to do is you squeeze wood in a squeezer and that will create resin then you put the resin in a still and that creates turpentine and then you can use the turpentine to create the wood polish so it's a fairly lengthy and expensive process but um, I think the results can be worth it. Yeah, these, these are quite nice. Okay, so now let's look at the panel worker which does the same job except that it produces panels. So we can have these guys and you can place them in the world again. Very nice. Okay, now we come it comes time to find out what the carpentry hammer is for here we go I've never done this before but yeah okay so these change orientation and so we could make a circle and I hear that they also can change different types of orientation as well but I'm not sure about exactly how to do that 
Oh, press shift click and it changes it to the side. The side that you're facing. Oh, that is cool. Shift click. That's the way. Okay, so if I shift click the top, then it'll go back to the top. And then I just normal click to rotate it on the face that it's on. And if I shift click these guys, yeah, look at that. Beautiful. Cool. All right, so we know what the carpentry hammer is for. That was a little experimentation. <laughs> Let's move on to the next section. Here we start to look at the products that are possible in this mod. So there's biomass, which is a fluid, and you make it by putting saplings with water in a fermenter. Um, and I believe there's other liquids you can use as well to increase your yield. And the one with the highest yield is the blue maho, because its sappiness is the high. Then we have the seed oil. Seed oil is used to make certain components. And you can make it with all of these products, all of which are from extra trees or forestry. Uh, but the one with the most is the chestnut. It produces 2.2 and you put them in a squeezer to make the seed oil. Seed oil, of course, it's used to make impregnated sticks, impregnated casings, all the kind of stuff you need for bees. Um, and those tree machines also require seed oil. Then we have fruit juice. Fruit juice is gained from putting fruits like these in a squeezer. And the fruit with the most fruit juice is the papaya it produces 0.6 buckets. But you can put all of these different fruits in the squeezer to get fruit juice. So, no shortage of choice there. You can also eat some of the fruits. In order for one of these saplings to grow, normally two conditions must be met. First of all, there must be enough light. It won't grow at night and it won't grow in the dark. So, you can light it any way you want, daylight or torches or whatever, but it needs enough light. The second condition that it needs to be met is no obstruction. So, if there's something obstructing it, then that will prevent it from growing, if there's a block above it. Now, I said before that the maturation rate uh, determines how much bone meal is required to mature the tree. And I'll demonstrate that now. So the hill cherry has a maturation rate of average. And if I just quickly look up what that means, that means it should take four bone meals. So I'll set myself in survival with four bone meals. One, two, three. Game is zero. And let's see if it matures. There we go. Four bone meal. Perfect. The sapling, which is considered the northwest sapling, northwest, that's this one here, is the center of the tree. So there's no point bone mealing any of the others. You will get nowhere. This is the only bone. This is the only sapling which will cause the tree to grow, and you can bone meal it however many times is required by the maturation rate. The yellow maranti has a slow maturation rate, so we expect. Five. There we go. That's two by two. So the northwest centermost sapling is considered the center. Obviously, for three by three trees, that just means the middle sapling. And for the one four by four tree that currently exists, which again is not available in survival. the north-west sapling in the middle four is the one to burn meal. Off we go. Where's the rest of my tree? Oh, here we go. Lovely. On occasion your trees will spawn butterflies, as you see here, and you can catch them with a scoop, or if you want you can try to kill them and they may drop a pollen of whatever tree they were pollinating. 
However, they have quite a lot of health, so and they're very tough to target, so it can be a bit difficult to do both of the, either of those things. Where to go? See? I think they must have armor because this is just ridiculous. Can I now become a butterfly? Yes, I can. I am a beautiful butterfly. Whoa, that looks crazy. Now let's look at the different fruit regimes in this mod pack. So, this is one type of fruit regime. The leaves themselves have these nodule things on them, and you can bone meal them to maturity, and when you break them, you may get a fruit. So, this is a plum tree, we get plums. Takes a while for them to mature, and again, the sappiness trait will control how quickly those mature. Then there is this, the jungle tree. And it makes cocoa beans, which is a crop that we are all familiar with from vanilla Minecraft, so there's no explanation necessary. Then we have this. This is a papaya tree, and although these read as cocoa beans, they are not emphatically not cocoa beans. If you break this log, then the cocoa beans will drop, but if you break this log, then this crop will not drop. These are papayas, and if I break, you can see that the collision mask is not the full size of this box thing. This is a fully mature papaya, so if we break it, we will get a papaya. And you can bone mill them to maturity, but there is a little bit of a bug, which means that they look a bit weird sometimes if you bone meal them too far. No need to do that. In forestry there seem to be different mechanics determining how much produce you get depending on what you what actions you take. For example, if I break all of these logs and allow these leaves to naturally despawn, then I'll get three times as many saplings as if I broke them by hand. Also, if all of these leaves were ripe and I broke them by hand, I would get half as much as if I had them despawn naturally. In addition to which, if you use a forestry farm, uh, the multi-farm, the orchard mode, then the rate of uh, which you will get fruit from mature leaves is much lower. It's between 5 and 30 percent, I think. So, with this particular tree, if I break these leaves, I'll certainly get a plum. You see? Every time. That one's ripe too. And if I let them despawn, I would get two. But if I used a forestry farm, I would get, on average, 30%. So, that's something to keep in mind with multi farms. They're not as powerful as you might think. Although, for this particular type of fruit regime, they are, because when they break this pod and collect the fruit, then they'll put a new pod on. Whereas if I break this myself, I have to grow a new tree to get more. That is a big difference. And of course, with the cocoa beans, we can just break them and replant them. But because I'm in creative mode, and because those are vanilla blocks, it just destroys them. These are not vanilla jungle uh, leaves, by the way. If I break enough of them, they will drop saplings, and if I use shears on them, they would not drop the leaf. If you use shears on any of the forestry leaves, they do not drop the leaves. Let's look at pollination now. So with pollination, we have the option of using bees, which is the way I recommend. Then you have the option of using pollen, which I don't recommend for reasons I will explain shortly. And then you can use butterflies which spawn naturally whenever you make forest-related related trees and they will fly around and slowly pollinate things but it's really too slow to to consider using them the way I recommend is to use bees now the uh, different enclosures for the bees have different statistics regarding what they do with regards to pollination and other things this is the apiary, it has a production modifier of 0.1 you have to put the frames in manually, but you can do the you can cycle the bees through automatically. 
and it has no other modifiers. Then you have the alveary, and this is a sieve, which I'll explain shortly. It has a production modifier of 1. You can automate the insertion of frames and bees, and the territory is doubled within alveary. So if it was 9x9, nine nine, then it would be 18x18, 18 18, I assume. Then we have the bee house. The production modifier is 0.25. So it's much better than a unframed alveary, uh, apiary. And four of these are as good as one alveary. Uh, it does not require any frames, um, but you have to manually recycle the bees. The lifespan of bees in the bee house is treble the normal lifespan, and it also has treble the pollination rate. So for my pollination needs, I've used bee houses and they've been very effective just stick 8 or 10 or 12 in the center of whatever trees you want to pollinate. Stick in some industrious bees, you'll get the species you want, trust me. Okay, so let's have a look at the alveary sieve. This is for getting pollen and the bees will work whenever there's forestry trees near, they will slowly, occasionally, get some pollen and these four slots will fill with pollen. Once you take the pollen out, the woven silk will be destroyed, so you can only do that once. So if you see one piece of pollen, don't take it out straight away because you'll lose your woven silk and then you'll be sad. Because the recipe is not super simple. Silk wisp is required, so it's quite expensive. Anyway, the pollen from these can be used to manually pollinate trees. So if I wanted to pollinate this guy right here, I could just go plunk, 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 and these trees are now these leaves are now pollinated, as we will be able to see if we use these spectacles. See they are now hybridized, and if we use a grafter on them, then we'll be able to get some hybridized saplings. And we can find out what kind of hybridized saplings they are using our trealizer. This one is just regular. Aha! Now we have a yellow Marenti that has a 4x4 girth. Interesting. And we have another with a 4x4 girth, but it's slightly different than the other one apparently. So that is how I got this gigantic 4x4 cherry tree. I took a normal cherry tree and I pollinated it with giant sequoia pollen until it uh, dropped a sapling with the right stats and then I planted that. Now I want to show you something related to that, but first we need to finish with this alveary sieve. So the sieve fills with pollen and you can use the pollen to do the process that I just demonstrated but really it fills too slowly. It, you're going to be waiting for the rest of time to actually get enough pollen to do anything. Because most of the chances are 10% and some of them are 5% so you would need at least 20 pollen, possibly 30 or 40, so really it's not really efficient. Now let me demonstrate how to do that cherry sapling thing. Uh, let's grab a cherry sapling, just a regular one. You can see this has the small size and a 1x1 one one girth and so on. So we can plant that. Use bone meal. And of course if we bone meal it leaves the fruit will advance in stages. And now giant sequoia pollen. So we create hybrid cherry trees. And some of them will get statistics from the giant sequoia but still remain cherry trees and they will still have the cherry fruit. Let's take a look at the ones we just picked up. So we got this one, okay that's not useful, not useful, not useful, also not useful. Not having much luck here but then it is a, aha, here we have a 4x4 but it's smaller, gigantic 1x1, 
That could be interesting. Let's try it out. Uh, smaller one. Oh, that's the vanilla sapling, or the uh, standard sapling. We need that. Aha, four by four giants. Okay. So we got our four by four gigantic hill cherry, and it will produce fruits. Yes, it will. Okay, good. So, in survival, you'll think, oh, I can't possibly do that because I need four. Oh, well, I need sixteen of these. No, you don't. You need one. Let me show you how. So this is the um, this is the four by four giant sapling. I'll plant that there. Now I'm going to use these vanilla saplings to fill out the rest. Remember I said that the northwestmost sapling in a four by four tree in the center four is the center of the tree. Well, that's the center of the tree. I'm using vanilla saplings, not the one that was hybridized. Again. And now I bone meal the center of the tree. And it takes a while, but ba boom! That is a giant 4x4 cherry tree. And obviously there's some variation in size. So this one is a slightly smaller one than that one. But that's just luck of the draw. It's not got nothing to do with the statistics itself use that same sapling again, I bet we can get a bigger one. But you don't need to see that. Let's move on. Regal, ain't she? I quite like this extremely giant yellow Maranti. Very nice. It's got these extra bits that look kind of cool. Nice generation. Anyway, we need to talk about the possible fruits. So, let's have a look at our cherry sapling again. We can see that it supports these two types of fruits, and the cherry is from the family of prunes. Obviously, it supports its own fruit, but what if it were a yellow maranti? The maranti supports only jungle fruits, so if it were to get a cherry fruit here, and it was the dominant side, then it would not be able to produce any fruit. But if it were to get a jungle type fruit, such as a mango, then it would be able to produce fruit. I will try to demonstrate that for you in a second. Here I have two examples. So, I've used a mango to pollinate a yellow maranti, and I apologize for making a mistake before, but mangoes are palms and they don't work on the jungle tree, on, uh, on the maranti, because it only supports jungle fruits. So, it does not take the mango. No mangoes will grow on this tree. So if we plant it, it's a 2x2, two two, so we can do that easily. Uh, which sapling is this one here, I think? Nope, this one. Yep. So you can see nothing happening on those leaves. But over here we have a sapling that has coffee. Coffee is a jungle fruit, so it does work. Let's try it out. One, two, three, four, and it's that sapling. But bam! So you can see these leaves have nodules on them and if I mature them we should be able to get some coffee. Apparently it's a low drop rate. Very low drop rate. Or didn't I mature them enough? Hmm, that's interesting. Ah, there we go. Finally got some coffee. Pretty low drop rate it seems. Much lower than that, uh, that plum over there. <coughs> so, there's one more thing I want to try, and I will show you when I do. Oh my goodness, check it out. This is a yellow maranti, but it's got the... Uh, it's got dates, which are uh, similar to this papayas hang off the trunk, and you can see that <laughs> it's a little glitchy. Anyway, everything's not perfect, I guess. You can see there, they go all weird. But if you mature them from start, then they're okay. And we should get some dates. Lovely. 
Okay, thank you very much for watching. I hope you've learned something useful. This is Blade NPD. I'm out. This has been my tutorial on trees.